Let's review ROH's 10th anniversary show, or Young Wolves Rising, whatever you want to call it. Just got done watching the show, it was actually pretty long, uh, been at work all day, so just watched it when I got back. And yeah, it was pretty good, I was quite impressed. Um, a couple of matches that I had a problem with, but we'll get on to that. A few things first, um, the pay-per-view streaming, I had a couple of problems with the audio where they were showing interviews but I could still hear the commentators uh, and I couldn't hear the interview so they were just talking but I couldn't hear what they were saying and then a couple of times where they showed a replay um, and I could still hear and I could hear the old commentary instead of the new co- in, instead of the current commentary what was actually happening at the time but no problems with lagging or or the playback or anything like that it was just a couple of slight niggles with the audio but nothing too dramatic I won't won't crap on them for that but it's something they can definitely still work on um, and a couple of production issues which I assume is ROH's fault where the graphics, wrong graphic popped up at a certain time um, but yeah like I say I'm not going to nitpick, it was it was okay overall, it didn't, it didn't spoil my enjoyment of the show anyway um, secondly the commentary was fantastic I have to say I I do like Kevin Kelly, and I I always have ever since he was, he was in WWF way back in uh, the actual era, ninety seven, ninety eight sort of time. Um, I've always liked his his stuff, and Nigel McGuinness is absolute gold, best best color commentator by a mile. Um, better than Lawler, obviously better than Booker T, better than Taz. And uh, McGuinness is is absolutely spot on. Is is everything you want out of a color commentator? Um, is insightful about the technical wrestling he's funny obviously being english i understand a lot of his humor anyway but he is fu- he's a funny fucker uh, there's no denying that and yeah an absolute great pair in kevin kelly and nigel mcginnis commentaries in the roh at the moment it's fantastic lastly before we get on to the matches the crowd fucking hell this new york crowd fucking sucks what is wrong with them? What is all this? Yes, yes, Brian Daniels, da, Brian, Daniel Bryan crap. What is what? What relevance is that? A few chants tonight came off as stupid, fucking immature crap. Chanting during the Kevin Steen Jimmy Jacobs match, they were chanting Little Jimmy in reference to Our Truth and all that shite. And I was thinking, what the fuck? Is, it's embar- This was embarrassing. Uh, just yeah, really sort of unappreciative of some of some decent wrestling and just oh, I don't know, just they spoil my enjoyment of the show. The New York crowd, without a doubt. I wish I could turn them fuckers off, but keep the commentary on. To be honest, at times, but um, anyway, getting into the show. As I say, I thought it was good. Um, in fact, I'd probably go as far as say it was very good. Uh, I've got issues with the main event and. I've certainly got issues with this opening match because this was not good. Um, All Night Express, Rhett Titus and Kenny King versus um, Wrestling's Greatest Tag Team, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. Uh, this wasn't good. Uh, and, I, and I had sort of... This put me in, in a mood where I thought where I was starting to think this pay-per-view is going to be absolutely shit because if this is the start of things to come, then it's not good at all. But obviously... I would say this is probably the worst match of the night. In my, yeah, in my opinion, this is the worst match of the night. Um, and when you see what, what talent was involved, it's absolutely criminal that to be able to say that this is the worst match of the show. But in my opinion, there were so many things. There was botchers. Shelton Benjamin looked absolutely disinterested from the start. I don't know if it's because of the position on the card, opening match um, that wasn't necessarily important uh, and he couldn't sort of... He wasn't motivated for it or what, but... His, he looked absolutely. His timing was off. He looked disinterested from from the start. Um, Reptitus has obviously been out injured, and you could tell his his timing was sloppy, and he looked. He really did look out of shape. When you go back, sort of six months and or before his injury, and look at Reptitus, he was always he was cut. He was in he was in good condition, good shape. Obviously, he's had a knee injury, so he couldn't do any cardio while he was out, while he was off injured. But he really did look. He looks sort of overweight. He looks sluggish and sloppy. Um, the only guy to come out of this with any credit is the guy who I actually 
dislike the most in probably in the entire company. I've never been a fan of Charlie Haas, but in this match, I think he, to be honest, he carried it. I have to say, I think he carried the the psychology of the match. Um, he carried the heat uh, that wrestling's Wrestle, uh, greatest tag team were getting from the crowd. He he really did impress me as a as a heel in this in this match. And before the match started, he did. Uh, he got some decent heat. He was it was. He had no choice really. Shelton Benjamin just left him to it. He didn't like I say. He didn't seem to give a fuck. So uh, read into that what you will. But all I'll say is I'm sure he'll be a lot better when they face the Briscoes for the tag team titles, which shouldn't be the case. Whether you're opening or closing the show, you should always give everything that you've got. And Shelton Benjamin just didn't give the fans the money worth money money worth in this match at all. So um, yeah, it, like it wasn't a terrible match, but it was, I would say it was barely okay, to be honest, and like I say, in my opinion, it was probably the worst match on the card. Uh, moving on to Mike Bennett versus Homicide, this was a match that I was absolutely dreading um, in my short preview the other day, I said that I don't know why this is on the card, I've never been a fan of Homicide, I hate Mike Bennett, I think he's totally wrong for what ROH should be aiming for, but I have to say this is this was better, in my opinion, this was better than it had any right to be. Uh, they obviously played on um, the outside interference a lot, which sort of, I think helped the match. Um, didn't It didn't become too stale, because, in my opinion, neither of these guys are very good in the ring. Um, people can say that Bennett's good in the ring. But is he? What? Why? How is he good in the ring? He's just he's just a average, like, mid-card WWE-type guy. Um and it bugs me when people say he's good in the ring and he's good for ROH. He isn't. He's not at all. He's not what ROH should be about, in my opinion. Um, I can go and watch Mason Ryan or I can go and watch David Otunga or Ezekiel Jackson in WWE for, if I want mid-card crap like like this guy is. But, yeah, like I say, this, had any, this didn't have the right to be as good as it was, in my opinion. It was, kept me entertained. It wasn't very long, about 10 minutes, I think, uh, which was good. It sh- needed to be kept short and sweet and it was um, and Homicide actually did well in this match he played on the whole obviously the crowd were giving Maria some stick about CM Punk and he played on that whole he actually did a go to sleep for his finisher which was pretty funny but um, yeah I don't want to spend too long talking about it, it was it was okay better than I thought it would be So, moving on to a cracking match between the House of Truth, Michael Elgin and Roderick Strong against Amazing Red, who was returning, and TJ Perkins. Um, this was I love this match. This was fast paced, straight from the start. Um, no messing about. This is how tag team matches like this should be in ROH. Not too long. Um, didn't insult anybody's intelligence. Just went out hard hitting, fast paced. Elgin, I'm really high on Elgin. I think he's absolutely tremendous i said in my preview video as well uh that he is my tip to be the breakout main eventer for this year without a doubt i think he needs to i think a feud's right there it's set up right there for him to turn on on the house of truth and and become a face against roderick strong and truth martini as and use the whole angle that he's not getting the opportunities that roderick strong was getting as a, as a kickoff for that feud but like I say, I'm, he's a he's an absolute beast. The guy's a beast. It looks like he's when, especially when he's wrestling y- uh, smaller, younger guys like T.J. Perkins and and Amazing Red. He's, it looks like he's going to snap him in two every time he touches him. And it, you just, I find myself on the edge of my seat wondering what the fuck he's going to do because, like I say, he's got freakish strength. He's an absolute monster. Um, in terms of ROH, it is anyway. Obviously, you put someone like Elgin in WWE and he becomes just another guy but in ROH is is freak and he's an absolute beast and he's he's um I can't I can't speak highly enough of what I think about Elgin at the moment. I think he's he's ready to be there, be in the main event. The crowd react to everything that he does. He gets that he gets that big man reaction. Even when he does simple moves like power slams, backbreakers, stuff like that, he gets that big reaction that Samoa Joe used to get when Samoa Joe used to do uh, sent on splash when he used to do sort of um, gut busters and stuff like that. He used to always get the big reaction because of it was being delivered. It looked as though it was being delivered with such force because of who was doing it, and that is that's good. That's definitely a good thing. And Elgin, like I say, 
he deserves to be in the main event as singles in my opinion but um, <laughs> so yeah this was a cracking match went about 12 I think it went about 12 minutes which was just about right I would say um, so yeah moving on to uh, the TV title match between Jay Lethal and Tommaso Ciampa I'm pretty high on Ciampa as well I said in my preview video a lot of his promo work um, he's got that glare glare at the camera and the sort of raspy voice that Reminds me a lot of Stone Cold Steve Austin when he was in ECW. Um, only with his promos, of course, not not the overall package, but just the promos, the gruff, like deep voice, the sort of blue blue eyes, the the glare at the camera, that sort of thing. I think he's got something there definitely to work on. Um, but I've got a problem with this match. It was given a fifteen minute time limit, which as soon as that was announced, I thought right how, how's this going to work because they've given it about as much time as they gave the opener and this needed more time I think it needed at least 25-30 minutes and the problem was they wrestled it like a 30 minute match which was really weird I couldn't I couldn't get to grips with this match at all it started off when I say that I mean they started off really slow like fucking pedestrian pace as though they were building for a to sort of move through the gears for 25, 30, as though they had 25, 30 minutes. And when it got to uh, 10 minutes gone and the, and the commentator said there was five minutes left in the match and they were still plodding along at this pedestrian speed, I was like, what the fuck, what the fuck's this? Uh, and then my, the, the problems really kicked in because they moved. Instead of going through the gears, if they had 25, 30 minutes, they sort of upped it from slow to medium, fast pace. They just went from dead slow to quick paced finish for the last three or four minutes and it was really came off really weird in my opinion um and yeah the structure of the match was just fucked up like i say they started off really slow as though they were building for something which is fine if you've got 25 30 minute match but if you've wrestled at a slow pace for 10 minutes, 12, uh, 12 minutes, and you've only got 15 minutes, you can't then rush everything into three or four minutes at the end. It just doesn't work, um, and it didn't work. And I don't know how they ever thought it was going to work, but it wasn't terrible, but the stuff at the end was good, and technically everything was okay, but it was just the structure of the match, the way it was laid out. If they were going to have a 15-minute time limit, they should have just gone balls to the wall straight away and had a fast-paced 15-minute match. They tried to build build the match when there wasn't enough time um, so that's my problem with the match anyway like I say nothing terrible but Jay Lethal ret obviously retained it was a draw uh, and the House of Truth ended up n uh, stealing the belt after the match but and I've just realised I've forgotten probably one of my favourite parts of the show after the Mike Bennett homicide match Kevin Steen came out uh, sorry uh, Eddie Kingston came out and, inter and was interviewed by Kevin Kelly and it was announced that there's going to be a cross promotion event in April I think uh, Chikara and ROH um, cross uh, co-promoting the show which should be good anyway But and then we get uh, Kevin Steen's new entrance music which is the start of David Richards' music that the wolf howling and then it goes into Kevin Steen's music and it comes out of this tennis racket which is obviously a jab at Cornet uh, with a picture of David Richards on the front of the, of the tennis racket, which is funny as fuck. That had me in stitches. The guy's fucking genius. This is why he is, in my opinion, the best best wrestler in the world or the best overall talent in the world, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, he comes out, says to Eddie Kingston that he's lost his edge and that they need to team up and tear the, tear the wrestling business apart from the inside. Uh, which Eddie Kingston obviously refuses to do, says that he loves Ch Chikara too much to do that. Uh, and they start fighting. Kevin Steen calls Chikara Mickey Mouse. Now, I don't know a great deal about Chikara. I've got, I'll be honest, I've seen bits here and there. and I've, I've, To be honest, I don't think I'd, I'd be a big fan of it. It seems too too much comedy in, involved for me. But, um, but yeah, Kevin Steen then, they brawl and Eddie Kingston's on the outside and Kevin Steen goes to take a piss on the Chikara uh, World Championship which is Eddie Kingston's belt, and all the Shikara guys come rushing out um, and sort of beat on Kevin Steen, and he's basically just fighting the fucking world, and I, I, I've, ne I've never been higher on anybody since fucking, well, 
probably Brock, Brock Lesnar way back in 2002, 2003. Kevin Steen is just he's one of the few reasons that I watch wrestling still. The guy's a fucking genius. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favourite favourite moments of the show, actually. This is how to do a segment on a pay-per-view. A lot of the time, WWE do a segment on a pay-per-view that belongs on TV. This belonged on a pay-per-view. This was fantastic. Um, so, yeah, getting back to the show. Anyway, where was I? Uh, the Briscoes against the Young Bucks for the World uh, Tag Titles. This was a fine, I would say. Nothing... It was pretty much what I expected. Uh, if I was to guess what how this match would go, uh, this would have been it, I would say. Uh, the it was very, very good technically. Um, a brawl to start off with. The only problem I had with the match was that it was never, ever in doubt who was going to win. It was obvious the Briscoes were going to win the match. They've only been, they only won the belts at final battle, so they're not going to, they're not going to have them drop the belts to the Young Bucks this early without, without the feud uh, culminating between the Briscoes and and wrestling's greatest tag team. That's going to obviously got some mileage left on it yet. So that's probably what we'll see. Um, but yeah, the match was fine. I thought uh, the Young Bucks are always entertaining to watch. I love them as heels, as their as the cocky heels that they play in PWG. I think that's what they should be, sort of for good, really, in Ring of Honor and PWG. I think that's what they're best suited to. Um, but yeah, it got really good for the last four or five minutes. But like I say, there was never any doubt who was going to win. So that was the only problem, really. Um, on to the match of the night and my match of the year so far. It looks like I'm biased towards Kevin Steen but I'm really I don't think I am I think this is with a consensus of opinion but this was a fucking fantastic match Kevin Steen versus Jimmy Jacobs um, in a no holds barred anything goes match this was brutal not not as brutal as Kevin Steen versus Steve Carino from Final Battle but it was getting there I would say the finish fucking hell that looked painful man Kevin Steen set two chairs up back to back um, so you had the backs of the chairs facing each other, sticking up, and did did an F five on Jimmy Jacobs, like, and his ribs. He came down rib first on the point of the chairs, and it looked fucking sick. Really did look look bad. It looked really painful. I don't know if you if you botched the way he landed or what, but it looked painful as fuck. But yeah, a lot of the stuff on the entrance ramp. Um, Kevin Steen got body slam, uh, sorry, slammed from the guardrail onto the entrance ramp, which looked painful um his interaction with the crowd just gets me in stitches every single time kissing blowing his nose on the crowd it's fucking the guy's absolute sick he's a genius um and jimmy jacobs i said in my preview that i wasn't a big fan of him and i'm and i'm not but i think he certainly held up his end of the bargain in this match he did a great job uh bumping around for kevin steen but yeah steen wins with that sick f5 on the chairs and smears his blood all over the crowd all over Jimmy Jacobs and fucking the guy's a fucking nutcase um, so on to the main event which as I said earlier I've got slight problems with I'm just absolutely exhausted that's my problem um, I feel like I've been th- walked through a fucking marathon watching that it's too long ROH need to there's nothing wrong with having a 25 25 minute fast paced main event um why they feel they need to do these 40, 45 minute, like 50 near falls at the end, like in main events. I know, I know that that's what they build themselves on, the fact that they're a wrestling company and all that shit, but it just gets too much. Kev, um, David Richards and Eddie Edwards at Final Battle was too much. Um, and this again was not as bad, but it was too much. It, it should have been, it was too long by about 10 minutes, in my opinion. Should have been ten minutes shorter. They lost. They actually lost my interest around the half an hour mark, and I was starting to switch off when when we got all the near falls at the end. Stupid near falls transitioned into submissions. I just hate all that stuff. Um, I just have a drink because I'm fucking exhausted watching that. Um, yeah, too many near falls transition into submissions and all that sort of stuff from Davy Richards. Uh, yeah, it should have been about 25, 30 minutes this match. It was good. It was good. The first, for the first half an hour, it was excellent. Very good. And it, they picked the pace up. And I thought the match peaked like around the half an hour mark. I actually did. I thought the crowd peaked. They were ready for it to end. And when we got to the last 
well, the last 10 minutes, really, the last 10 minutes were just actually quite painful to watch. It was just like, you kicked out again. Like, I need this to fucking end. But it didn't. It kept dragging on and dragging on. Um, and eventually, Adam Cole, who, he could have, he could have, this could have been a breakout match for him in ROH, Adam Cole as a, as a main eventer, but in my opinion, it kind of, it kind of blew his fucking chance. I mean, I count at least three botches, important botches as well, of, of big impact moves towards the end of the match, uh, that were, that were basically, looked like his fault. Um, but, don't get me wrong, I still, I'm quite high on him, I'm, I like him a lot more than I do Kyle O'Reilly, I think, a lot of Kyle O'Reilly stuff is a bit, like, cringy is the right word, cringeworthy, I guess. All his, like, MMA stuff, fucking hell, just drop it, mate. You're not an MMA fighter. You're a little, skinny, like, ginger kid. That's it. Um, just sell more. And stop trying to be... It's not MMA. It's wrestling. But, don't get me wrong, it was a good match. Having said all this, it was a good match, but it was just too long, too drawn out, and... Too much, just too much overkill. They just need to cut. They just need to pull back a little bit on the. There's nothing wrong with a 25, 30 minute main event, and they need to, in my opinion, that's something that need to just take heed of and just do more. Um, just don't over, don't overkill it. Don't overstretch the match. It's already it peaked ten minutes ago, so just let it be. You don't have to go up balls out every single time. Um, but yeah, like I say. Adam Cole got the pin on David Richards, the world champion, which obviously uh, a bit of a coup for him. But like I say, I think he his work in the match was average at best, in my opinion. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the show. Like I say, I thought it was good to very good. I'll stick my mark below. But um, the match of the year, had the match of the year. oh Kevin Steen obviously came out after the main event had finished and ran down David Richards and ran down Jim Cornette. Uh, which was pretty fucking hilarious, but it looks like we're gonna get Steen v Davy Richards at some point. Uh, but it was announced was announced on this show that at Showdown in the Sun WrestleMania weekend is gonna be a triple threat: Davy Richards, Eddie Edwards, and Roderick Strong for the world title. And I can't believe they're doing this again. In my preview video, I, not that anybody fucking watched it, but I said this has just been done too much. These three people over different combinations, different stipulations. It's just been done way too much. I've seen enough of it. Put someone put someone fresh in main event. Why didn't why didn't put Elgin in the main event instead of Roderick Strong? Just for, just for this one match, see what happens. But anyway, that's for another time. So yeah, I thought the show was uh, good to very good and um I'm looking forward to see what they do on T V, uh, with the Kevin Steen stuff and Looks like there's still going to be feuding. There's still going to be a feud between Kyle O'Reilly and Eddie Edwards. So we'll see where that goes. But yeah, cheers for watching anyway. See you later.